Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, uh, Lead Generation Through a Shift with MAPS Coach Richard Schulman. Please note that this webinar is being recorded, and you'll automatically receive the recording after the call. If you have any questions for your coach, please type them into the questions box located in your webinar taskbar. Following the webinar, if you have any questions about today's call or coaching programs, please email us at fasttrack at kw.com. That is F-A-S-T-T-R-A-C-K at kw.com. That's all for me. Richard, take it away. Hey, thanks, Corey, and good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on when you're listening. Wanted to, uh, to let you know I'm really excited to be here today. I love talking about the very simple skill of lead generation and lead conversion and how mastering it can absolutely change our career trajectory. So we're going to talk about this really focused on what we're going through right now, a shift. Some of us are earlier and some of us are later on in it, but we're all in a shifting market. And if you don't think that you are, you probably are not looking at all the signs or you're you're missing the upcoming shift. So it's a really interesting time in the real estate market if you've never been through one before, and it's really going to change uh, how you do as an agent. So let's talk about how we can really take advantage of that changing market to our benefit. So let's jump right in. A little bit about me before we get started. I've been at KW. This is actually you know, my 13th year. Just finished 12 full years. Uh, I go to all the training, mega camp, family reunion. Uh, I've taken just about every class that KW has to offer. I really find that there's never a limit on what I can learn or change about my business to improve. Um, I sort of subscribe to the model of how do we improve very slightly every day, get a little, get a little bit better every day to improve our business. Um, to that end, my team and I have sold just over $800 million in homes. We're actually about $850 million a lifetime. Um, right now, we're a 12-person team. We're nice and lean. I have 125 people in my profit share. And what I, the reason why I wanted to uh, share all that information with you is that I want you to know that all those things, everything on there comes from two things. They come from, comes from training, comes from lead generation and conversion, right? So everything that you want to accomplish in real estate, within the KW organization, or in any other business, it all comes down to skills-based lead generation and conversion. So if you master those two things, you can really do whatever you want to do. So what I'm here to do today is teach you how to up your skills so that you can lead generate and convert a little bit better. Now let me give you a quick definition. In my world, lead generation means the idea that we're gonna meet people in the world, collect their information, prepare them for the fact that we're gonna communicate with them on a business level, and then set a purposeful follow-up plan. So let me break that down real quickly. We're gonna meet people. It doesn't matter who you meet. It could be the person cutting your hair, it could be someone in an open house, it, anyone out there in the world, we want to meet them, develop a bond, collect their information. We need their name, their phone number, their email, hopefully their mailing address, ways that we can stay in touch with them. And then we need to put them into our database, right? We need to have a database that we're using and then set a follow-up plan for them. So if you meet someone and never follow up with them, it doesn't work. Or you meet somebody, you don't collect their information, it doesn't work, right? You have to do all these steps. So... If you can do that really, really, really well, like master it, absolutely master it, in my opinion, I don't know that you need to do really much else, right? I think everything else becomes really ancillary to the whole part of it, right? I think that if you are a master at meeting people, collecting their information, and setting meetings with them, then everything else is really easy, right? This is the real tough part of our business, and we're going to master it. So to show you how serious I am about that simple part of it, this year we have pending and closed about $105 million in sales. We did $134 million last year in sales. Um, this year, we have $0 ad spend for new leads. We haven't spent a penny on new leads. We're doing everything through good old-fashioned, skills-based conversion of people, right? Just meeting people in the world, contacting them, staying in front of them, asking for referrals, doing all the right things with them, right? We don't pay for uh, Zillow leads anymore. We don't pay for Trulia, a realtor. We just cut realtor. Uh, we cut Yelp. Uh, we don't do any farming. What we do is we're very aggressive on the phones about meeting people, and we're not cold dialing. We're doing all sphere of influence dialing, although you can do cold dialing too. We're doing all sphere of influence, all calling for relationships, open houses, right? Everything's face-to-face, -face, person to person, and we're very heavy on appointment setting. And if you're very good at this, here's the thing. If you're really good at meeting people, building relationships, getting referrals, getting repeat clients, you don't need to meet a lot of people. Right, It's a mistake that I think a lot of us were making, myself included, that we were trying to accumulate these massive databases. Right, We were trying to meet a million people, 
And what we were missing is that we really only need a solid database of 250 to 500 people. If you had 500 people in a database and everyone knew you and you knew them and you were front and center in a relationship with them, you would have a thriving business, right? Absolutely guaranteed. You don't need 20,000 people in a database. You don't even need 5,000 people in a database. You just need a few hundred, right? So how do we do that? So the first thing I want you guys to do is let's do an activity now. And you can do this live, or if you're on a replay, you can do this. You can pause and do it on a replay. What I want you to do is take out your phone if you can. It's not going to interrupt the call. Take out your phone and text five people and ask them to go out with you. And what I'd like you to do is, I know we're sort of crunched for time here. If you can't do it now, you can do it next time. Is I'd like you to ask people that are not your top five people, right? I don't want you to ask your best friend and your cousin and the last three people you sold the house to. Find people you sold the house to three years ago. Find people that you haven't talked to in a while you need to reconnect with, right? Last month, I went to a coffee with two people I went to elementary school with, right? Guess what? Got referrals from both of them, right? That's free referrals. It cost me, you know, just the cost of coffee or lunch, right? So how do we stay in touch with those? So text those people and just say, hey, do you want to grab coffee today, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, whatever it is? The point is that we want to stay front and center relationship. What I want to do is teach you to reframe your day around setting appointments and going on those appointments. When I, when I supervise agents, when I train agents, I find they're doing lots of things that aren't dollar productive. They're doing lots of, you know, quote, email. They're doing lots of, you know, quote, work, right? They're going on broker tour for six hours a week, but they're not prospecting six hours a week. We're doing things that are not dollar productive. Now, when I do this live, when I do this with people, if I do an hour and a half class is my average, and I get everyone to text about 10 to 15 people during that class, usually we're seeing everyone set about three to five appointments, depending on how uh, intense they are about it. So I know that if you guys do this, that you can set those kinds of appointments too. And what you're going to see is that if all you did was find those 250 to 500 people and go out with them once a year, twice a year each, there's a lot of business in that, right? I want to teach you how to really master that. So it's not just the coffee date. There's more than that, but that's the start. And that'll show you the simple part about this, right? The simple part about this type of lead generation is that this is all we need to do is really just double down on our core database, right? Now, there's lots of other stuff we're going to work on doing too. Uh, we're going to work on how to really find, you know, find those 500. You might have a 2,000 person database and how do we dial down to the 500 that really count? Because I think what I found in having people grow larger databases is they're so busy trying to stay, you know, in front of 2,000 people, they're really not staying in front of the right 500 people, right? So finish up your text messages. Just for clarity, um, you can do this. The text messages uh, definitely will count um, Instagram messages, Facebook messages, LinkedIn, anything like that. The key is what I want you to do is build a habit of meeting people. And it doesn't have to be a listing appointment. It doesn't have to be a buyer meeting. Although those are fantastic things, and we're going to definitely learn how to do better at that. What it needs to be is the idea that you're constantly in front of people. Because I know from doing this for a very long time that if you're in front of people, business will happen, right? Most of my business, I'm going to personally handle about $30 million part-time this year while I'm running the team, and I have some other things that I do as well. Most of my business, pretty much all of my business is coming from me being in front of past clients, friends, family, that type of group. And then them coming to me and saying, hey, I want to buy a house. Hey, I want to sell my house, right? I go on very, very few cold listing appointments where I'm competing against other agents. I'm mostly going on listing appointments for past clients, friends, and referrals, right? So if you're front and center in front of your social group, the business will come to you. And that's really the future of the business. All right. Let me know if I have any questions there. Hopefully, you all got your five text messages out. Um, if you get an appointment, let me know in the question box. It'll be really cool. But yeah, if you text five people now, within the hour, you should have a couple appointments for coffee. Um, as you keep doing that, if you do that every day, or sometimes I teach people to do like 20 of these on a Monday to load up the week with appointments, what you find is eventually you're going to hit, you know, before you make 100 of these outbound texts, you're going to get uh, a listing appointment. You're going to get a live buyer that you didn't know about. That's like the real magic is when you are forced by doing this to reconnect with an old lead, old client, old friend that someone's going to say, hey, actually, we're thinking about selling. Hey, actually, how's the market, right? Okay, now on that coffee date, I'll, I'll walk you through the whole coffee date process in the class. On that coffee date, 
It's not a close. It's not a sales pitch. It's just building a friendship relationship. But what you find is, is that people who are interested in real estate will bring up real estate. And then there's some skills how to convert that into a closing. Right. So in the coffee date, you're going to chat, just make friends. What's new, talk about sports, talk about whatever's interesting locally to you. And they're eventually going to ask you about real estate if they're interested. And then we need to have some, some lines for that. Okay. So we talked about appointments. I've heard different numbers. At family reading this year, Gary said seven appointments a week. Um, I'm pretty sure he's talking about buyer meetings and seller meetings. In, in my world, seven is the absolute minimum, right? One a day. Um, I'd actually rather see you aim for, uh, I'd actually rather see you aim for two appointments every work day. So that is 10 appointments a week. I think that we could be doing 10 face-to-face -face meetings every week. I think that's easy to do. I think that's important to do. And I think that's the most profitable thing we can do with our time. Now, here's how I would break it down, right? Because you're saying, oh my goodness, where am I going to squeeze 10 appointments in? First of all, I want you to think about it differently. I'm not asking you to squeeze 10 appointments in. I'm asking you to start your week with 10 appointments and then everything else gets squeezed in around the appointment, right? Nothing else matters. Your Facebook business page does not matter as much as these face-to-face -face appointments. I would ask you to look at it a couple ways. Either you set some consistent time, like every day at you know two and four, you're doing a coffee date, or 11 and three, you're doing a coffee date, or maybe you set your Thursdays to do five or six of these and just knock them out all out at once. Um, but I think if you had a focus of doing two a day on average, and it could be two a day, it could be five a day twice, I think you're gonna change your business, right? Because the more you talk to people, the more you get in front of people, the more they hire you. Remember this and write it down. The number one reason people hire you in real estate is they hire people they like, right? People want to work with people they like. Now, I make sort of a joke when I teach this class, and I say, as a, as a very productive agent in the LA area, my number one competition, the number one person I lose business to, it's not other productive agents. I actually fare pretty well against them in a competitive listing or competitive buyer appointment. The number one person I lose business to is what I jokingly refer to as the underqualified friend of the client, right? They, they end up hiring the cousin, you know, the wife's coworker, you know, their neighbor, right? I just had one where I'm uh, co-listing now with the neighbor because that was a, a good relationship and we couldn't get around that, right? So you can be that person. You can be the friend of the client. And that's how you get the business. It's much easier and much cheaper than farming, than door knocking and then cold calling, right? Those things can be viable as well, by the way. Don't not do them, right? You can do those things as well. But I'm te I want to teach you a simpler and easier way. So you decide what you want to do. Maybe you want to start with seven appointments and go up to uh, – uh, maybe you want to start with seven appointments and then go up to – five to 10 appointments, or uh, 10 appointments, five, five days a week, two, two a day. But I think if you just start with the metric of, I need to be meeting one person a day, seven days a week, then I think you're gonna really change what you do with your time. So if you follow Gary like I do, you've been to Family Reunion, you've been to Mega Camp, you've been to all the other training events. Um, I think that, that there was a time when there was a focus on building big, big businesses with lots of inbound leads, and, and that's important. I think the focus now is, is building a database with a really solid number of quality leads and building a, a moat around it. And when Gary said that a few years ago for the first time, it really spoke to me. You know, the idea that I just need to find the right people to work with. So listen, I have 51,000 people in the Richard Schulman team database, and I have 12 people on the team, about eight or nine of them are agents, and they each have their own, you know, pile of a few thousand leads, and we have some, you know, Good, good pile of non-responsive leads. My personal segment of that, the segment I work is 230 people right now that I can do all the business I need to do with 230 people in my database, right? And I could probably, I could probably realistically cut half of those people out and do pretty close to the same business, right? If you have the right people in your database that you develop relationships with and are systematic about and purposeful about, you don't need to have 51,000 people, right? You need to have the right 250 to 500 people. By the way, a, a, a really good uh, additional video, is if you look at the beginning of Mega Camp 2018, the first couple uh, 
uh, chats that Gary did. He talks a lot about this really in detail. It's really fantastic. And so just to clarify, it's 230 uh, people. You need to have phone number and email, hopefully their address too. And you need to have, uh, you know, yeah, you know, they need to know you. You know, if you run into them at the market, they need to recognize you, you need to recognize them, like that level of relationship. So we're going to spend the entire class absolutely mastering this. And when you absolutely master this process, this whole thing, everything else gets a lot easier, right? Now, let's talk about setting appointments. So we're going to be talking about building a moat. We're going to be talking about building a database. But at some level, at some point, you need to meet people at an open house, door knocking, social engagement, at a party, even talking to people on the phone. And you need to be able to close them into an appointment, right? So if you can't close people into purposeful appointments, you don't finish this assignment, right? The assignment of I'm going to meet a bunch of people, put them in my database. Part two of that, once you're able to collect that data, go on the coffee dates, now you need to actually meet with them. And you need to meet with them on a business level, right? The coffee dates are a social engagement activity, right? That's just two friends hanging out and maybe business gets discussed. But sometimes you're going to need to close for business and sometimes you're going to need to set buyer appointments, especially when you're meeting new people and entering them into your database, right? Because you're not going to meet a new person at an open house or door knocking, right? And then they're not going to want to have coffee with you randomly, right? You're going to eventually, you're going to also need to build them into your database using actual buyer scripting. Now, once you meet with them, once you're working with them, you may become friends, hopefully, and then you can have the coffee date. Here's a really good script. Write down the script if you can. Now, in a shifting market, we've changed all of our scripting. Because here's the thing, in a shifting market, you can't just say, you want to buy a house, let's meet right? In a hot market, you can do that. In a hot market, you can be unskilled and do pretty well. You know, I've been through two now. My second shift I'm going through. Now you need to be skilled. Why is that? Well, if we call 100 buyers right now, I would say between 60 and 80 of them will say, I'm waiting on the market, right? I'm not buying right now because I'm waiting for the market to shift. I'm waiting for the market to change. So what do you do? Well, first of all, we can't tell people something they don't want to buy. But we can't tell people what's out there. And the word that we're using that's been really successful for us in converting appointments is opportunity. Now, you could rewrite this script however you choose. If you use the word opportunity and you're sincere about it, it makes it very easy to set appointments. Because here's the thing. In a shifting market, there is opportunity. In a shifting market, shift means that there's uncertainty. Uncertainty means that some houses will sell for better prices than they would have sold for previously. Right? So here's the script we're using a lot, is that I'm seeing some incredible opportunity in the market right now. Is that something you're interested in discussing? Now here's the great thing about that script. If they're interested at all, at the slightest level of interest, they will say yes. Are you interested in opportunity? Yes. Great, let's meet. If you're not interested in opportunity, guess what? Move on and find a better lead. Right? We don't need to work with people who aren't motivated. They may not be able to buy or be ready to buy. So we spend a lot of time trying to tra chase those people down, the ones who are just not interested in buying or selling a home. We're spending way too much time with them. We need to be spending our time with people who are excited. So if you call 100 people and say, you know what, listen, the market is shifting. I'm seeing some really interesting opportunity. Are you interested? If they say yes, great. And if they say no, it's fine. Move along. Now, here's the thing. You have to be knowledgeable at your local marketplace. But I can tell you legitimately that we're finding people properties at much better prices than they could have 12 months ago. And we've got some clients who are very happy buying right now, even by knowing that the market may or probably won't drop further, right? There are people out there who are really happy to shave 10 points off a deal and tell their friends about it, right? And then there's the next script. So in our market here in LA, you have to you have to customize for what you are seeing in your market. But I can tell you, here in the LA market, I'm seeing prices down by as much as 10%. Are you interested in looking at properties that are discounted 10% from last year? You know what? A lot of people will say yes, and a lot of people will say no. But it's a much better script than anything else that you can go with right now. I think you need to head on, go with the fact that there is a market shift and that we need to embrace it and we need to let people know here's what we have available for them. 
So make sure you've written down those scripts. Uh, there'll be a lot more scripts in the class, and we'll get really more detailed about how we do the scripting. But for now, just take those scripts and try them out today. Try calling 50 people today or Monday if, it's, uh, or if you're listening to this over the weekend. Call 50 people and give them the script. You'll be shocked at the results, right? So these are not earth-shattering ideas, but we're going to really tweak and master the fine details of this process. That's really what we're doing here is we're really absolutely mastering. If you're a B plus right now, you're going to be an A plus plus this process by the end, and that's going to get you a huge dis difference in business. <clears throat> Same thing with sellers. You know, If you're a seller right now, it really does not make a whole lot of sense to wait out the market by six or 12 months, right? So there's a lot of scripting you can use for sellers. A lot of sellers are saying the market's poor right now. I'll just sell it in March. Well, we know about market cycles. We know that market cycles in real estate don't last for four months. Mar March may have better prices, but probably not. So here's a great script. Right now, we're at the top of market. Rates are the lowest they've ever been, more or less. Do you feel that in the next six to 12 months, your home will go up in value? And you know what? If the answer is no, which it probably is, it's really time to look at selling your home. And I think what's really important here when you're talking to sellers is just being really honest about what's happening and really honest about what the opportunities are and the risks are. The chance that your home goes up is very small. The chance that your home goes down in value is very high. And that's very high is a huge, it's a huge value difference for you. So that's a great seller script. I'll give you a second to write it down. But just be really head on and honest about what you're seeing with buyers and sellers. Listen, we're in a shifting market. If you want to sell, it's probably better to sell today than it is to sell in six and 12 months. You want to hold this property forever? I feel very strongly about the long-term value of real estate. I'm not selling any of my property. I am buying stuff personally, but here's where we are in the marketplace. Okay. And then the last thing we're going to really focus on covering is streamlining. Now, we kind of talked a little bit in the beginning about we don't want to have two, three, four, five, eight thousand person databases. On some level, you need to have that, or it's good if you have it, because it allows you to sort of filter that larger database in order to pull people into your top database. So, we're going to talk about some technology ideas about how do you take a larger database if you have one or you're able to build one and really sift through that to get people into your top 250. You know, something we do is we do a lot of emailing and texting of people. I'll share with you all the content that we send out, and I'll walk you through the system of how you do that. But, like, for example, I just sent out an email to about 3,500 people in one of our database pools, and I got about 15 responses. So those 15 people were mostly not in my top 250. Let's say 10 of them were not. So those 10 people now get bumped up to my top 250, so I can really focus on them for now. And some will buy something and some will not. And some will email with me for years and never do anything. And some will disappear tomorrow. But we also want to not forget how do we continue to grow that 250. Because people move away. People buy a house and never buy a house again. People buy a house and never call you back again. right? We need to constantly replenish that 250. So we're going to be talking a lot about using systems and technology to automate that process. Because here's the thing is that even if you're – a phone animal and you can sit on the triple line dialer all day long, it's really hard to 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 dial enough people to really grow that database just by dialing, right? It's it's one part of it. So we're gonna be talking about texting, how we do texting. Uh we're gonna be talking about great emails, great ways to email people, systematic ways to email people. And then we'll talk about die auto dialers and fly dials and some other things. So uh it's really just the whole idea of how do we just continue to nurture and build that top two fifty to five hundred. And the last reminder here is sort of on shift is shift is a time in the marketplace where agents with skills, skills-based agents will absorb market shares from other agents. In the last market cycle, the number of realtors at NAR, National Association of Realtors, dropped by about half, right? But in a shifting market, you know, even in a quote down market, the number of transactions, which is obviously the number of closed sales and paychecks getting paid out, doesn't change that much. I think the number of sales from top of the market to bottom of the market was maybe down by like 15% last time around, which is, by the way, a lot, several hundred thousand fewer homes sold, but also several hundred thousand fewer realtors. 
they actually, NAR reported, I believe in 2009 or 2010, the highest they had ever done as far as number of transactions per agent. In 2006, I was at a different company. I do not know anything about real estate, quite honestly. In 2007, I moved to KW, and you can see the results there. In 2006, I sold nine homes. Pretty good, actually, in LA for you know a new agent with no database, really, and, and uh, not much of an idea what they're doing. In 2008, I did 51 home sales on my own. Uh, I started the team the next year, but I did that all just working a shifting market. You know, all, all you know, starting to take in the classes, starting to focus on skills, starting to focus on database. So the point here is that I don't know that you're going to five X your sales next year. You might, you can, but I want you guys to be really clear on the opportunity that in a shifting market, and you've probably already seen it. I've already seen it in my market center. The number of agents coming through the door, new licensees coming through the door, dropped way down. Number of new licensees sticking around, dropping down. A lot of you know mid-level production agents kind of leaving the business quietly, you know, kind of dropping down their business. But what I am seeing is a lot of the larger teams are staying pretty consistent or up. And I want to propose to you the opportunity that if you become a skills-based agent and you hammer in on your database, you can have a big change in results for a shifting market. So once again, the program is we're going to absolutely master a very simple thing, right? Our sole job here is going to be just to absolutely perfect the art of finding people, connecting with them, and setting meetings, right? If you can do that at the highest level, like if you can come and teach a class on that to your market center by the end of this, I promise you that you will see a difference in your business that will be, will be shocking to you, right? Because this is the whole business. The whole business is purposely setting these appointments and building relationships. And it takes a lot of skill and a lot of systems and a lot of effort. But if you do that and when you do that, you will see that big change in your business. So if you enjoyed that and you're interested, I'd love to have you on the full four-hour marathon lead generation session. This is our 11th time through. We've completely retooled the class to focus on shift. Um, you can see the web link there. The investment is only $149. Um, in the class, we have four one-hour episodes. Uh, we're very purposeful and focused about going through the whole process start to finish of finding people, placing them in the database, skills-based scripting to convert them to appointments, and continuing to nurture and grow a database through technology. Now, once you learn how to do that, you will be an absolute master at setting appointments and just going on appointments, pretty easy to close, right? Um, so there's the class. We'd love to have you on. I will also provide you in the class all of the paper material and backup that I've mentioned all the emails, all the scripts, all the systems, everything for you. It's a plug and play system that you can take with you and implement your business right away. It's also really fantastic timing because here you're at the end of the year and we're really focusing on what is 2020 gonna look like. This right, your pipeline is already building for next year. So this will lead you right into 2020 and your pipeline. So thanks for joining me on the webinar guys. If you have any questions, you can uh, pop them in the question box and I'll stick around for a couple minutes. Corey, we have some questions? Yeah, we have one who's looking for clarification regarding the 230 people you mentioned earlier in the call. Did you mean 230 people or 230 addresses? Uh, you need to have um, you need to have at least 250. Uh, I have 230 people in my database. Those are people that I would recognize at the market, right? Um, you need to have between 250 and 500 people that you would recognize at the market. So obviously you have your, their name, their email, their phone number, hopefully their mailing address, your friends on Facebook, Instagram, your LinkedIn connected. I mean, these are people in your world. And, you know, it's really like the whole package for those people. Now, if you have a couple thousand people uh, in your database, then you might not have all that information for each one of them, but we're gonna show you the systems of how do you cultivate those people from maybe just an email address or maybe just a phone number into someone who could be in your top 250 to 500. So I hope that answers the question. Awesome. So we have another one. Um, someone says, uh, I do not drink coffee. Any other thoughts on meeting options? Is lunch too long? Yeah, so do the coffee date, but grab like a nice tea or something else. Um, here's the thing about lunch. Look, do lunch with your really key influencers. So, you know, I have a friend who sends me probably five or six referrals a year, and we go to lunch. Like we're friends, and we hang out, and we go to lunch. But if you're trying to knock out five, seven, ten of these in a week, First of all, it's more lunches than you're going on, right? But also lunch is just more expensive and more time consuming, and you don't get any added value. You know, you get all, all the value out of a 20-minute coffee date, 
they eat out of an hour and 20 minute lunch or start drinking coffee. <laughs> awesome. Um, so will you be talking at all about the tools we have in command? Yeah, so we're not going to do any command hyper-specific training because command already has lots of training available, so we're not going to duplicate that. But we are going to show you things that you can do within command that are congruous with the message that we're talking about here. So we'll leave the command training to command, but we are going to be talking about things you can do within command or really any CRM as far as organizing your CRM, pushing out mass email, pushing out mass text, evaluating the results from those, and then moving forward from there. Awesome. I'm just going to jump on in real quick about the, the program. So it's called Marathon Lead Gen, and it is with Richard Schulman. It does start on November 1st, and the dates for the webinar, you can access them in the MAPS Coaching uh, website on the, the sign-up page. You'll have the um, all of the dates when, they're, when the call times are um, for anybody who wants to sign up. Okay, perfect. Thanks, guys. I really look forward to having you on there. Um, uh, a replay of this will be emailed out to you. If you have any other questions, you can email me or MAPS, and we'll get back to you right away. Thanks, Corey. Welcome. Have a great day. Right.